gentlemen, please welcome Harrison Ford. Okay. Welcome. Thank you very much. I noticed even when you were standing in the uh, in the hallway and we ran the clip, you didn't look up at it. And I was reading that you don't watch your own films. You only you watch them in the test screenings, and that's sort of it for you. Well, I don't have any trouble watching them when I when we're looking at dailies or or we're talking about a cut. Right. Uh, or there's still work left to be done on it. But when it's over and it's a dead thing, and they start striking prints uh, from it, it's over for me. There's nothing I can do about it. So I. I a little uncomfortable watching it at that point. When you say a test screening, does that, because I'm not in the industry and I don't go through this process, you take a film and you show it to an audience and depending on whether or not they like the ending or they like the way it is, you either recut it or you change it or is that? Not a Sidney Pollack movie, no. Oh, <coughs> other movies though. Well, in fact, we didn't even, we don't test screen in the, uh, most films, they, they have a screening and they have little cards and they hand out the cards to the audience and the audience grades the film and they talk about what their favorite scene is, their least favorite scene. And then they ask some of the most interesting people to stay after. And they have what they call a focus group. Ah, and okay. then they interview these people and, uh, and depending on the, on the strength of will of the, of the filmmaker, changes may be made. But Sidney Pollack, of course, is so far beyond that. He just does the film and we just release the film and it works. Well, hopefully. Okay. In choosing a film, because you have reached the status, I don't know how many, how many scripts are given to you each year. How many do you look at? How did you decide? I, I get a lot to read. Uh, do they go through a process, though? Does somebody call out yeah, the real garbage yeah. and then you get the... Well, I mean, the less attractive The script. less attractive. Excuse me. Excuse me. That's, that's the well, word I, I was looking I get, for. I get a script and I get a synopsis of the story. Right. And I'm... Uh, Basically, I can decide whether or not that's something that interests me. If it's a story of a man whose wife was murdered and who's being unjustly accused, then I don't. I... <laughs> I can say, been there, done that. What, right. what, what else is there? Right. So I'll sort through uh, a number of scripts, and, and many of them uh, I won't be able to do for that kind of reason. Okay. Others I'll read, and I sometimes say, that if I finish a script, I'm quite likely to do it. Um, ah. Because I, I, f I stop reading. If I, if I sense a, a lack of ambition, if I, I, if I sense a venality or a pandering to the audience's baser instincts. Right, right. We all have a base instinct. <laughs> uh, then, uh, then I don't read anymore. So you finished Sabrina. Yeah. But it was said, and you know, I. The problem with reading research is you never know how much of the articles are such or true, but it said at the time you did Sabrina, you were looking for a comedy. Is that true? Yes. Ah. So are you still looking for... I mean, I see it as a comedy, but I see it also more as a, as no, a love a, story. I don't a, see it, it as like a ha-ha. It is a romantic uh, comedy, but I think there's lots of, uh, of laughs in it. Uh, I think what's, what's intriguing, what's unique about this film is the blend of very real emotion and and com comedy. Did I just put my foot in my mouth there? I don't think so. Well, you said, I said, because I didn't see it. To me, comedy means, maybe I have a different impression. To me, it's something that you, s you go to belly laugh through. Because I, I, uh -huh. I didn't see the original Sabrina. I thought I, I might see it after I saw yours. But then I thought, why? I've really enjoyed this one. Well, good. Didn't want to go through that process. But I found it such an excellent story. It is. It's a great yeah. story. And if it was Hamlet, nobody would be questioning us making it over again. <laughs> right. Or if it were Cinderella, and it is very close to Cinderella. Yeah, it's uh, a wonderful story. Yeah. yeah. So, so I wasn't, you know, I'm, I was looking for romantic comedy. A little bit of comedy, a little bit of romance. Right. And this had it both. What are you looking for now? Do you know? Do you have a sense of where you want to go next? Do you are you yeah. kind of person? I have that I have a, a job starting in, at the end. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> we got to speed January. this up. Yeah, uh, I'm going to do a uh, a police uh, uh, film, which I play a New York City uh, uniformed police officer with Brad Pitt and directed right. by Alan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm out of here. <laughs> no, really, I can't take this anymore. Oh. How do you feel working with uh, the younger, handsome hunks now that you're the older, handsome hunk?
These here are dancing shoes I'm wearing. Did I, yeah. Did I, yeah. These are happy feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet they are happy feet. Uh, I, uh, oh, I'm delighted. I, I, there's a crop of, of young guys coming up that are tremendously talented. Who do you admire most? Uh, Brad Pitt. <laughs> what a coincidence! No, He's in your I, next film. I don't. I don't have favorites. I, I really don't. I, I think there are a, a, a number of people who are doing terrific work uh -huh. uh, that are younger than I am. <laughs> <laughs> it talked about in Sabrina. Um, you're a man who. It's it's a kind of a different role for you. You know, you're not. Um, yeah, I hope so. Yeah, it is. It's a different different aspect of your personality. Okay, which is what, enough, yeah. which is what you were quoted as saying. Acting is, I don't want people to know me in my private life. You keep your private life private. Mm -hmm. They get to learn about me, the part of me that I give as I portray characters. Yeah, yeah. So that's a uh, another different part of you, and mm -hmm. and it's, and it also said that there was a question of whether or not they would hire a particular woman to play this role, and they said your wife, and you said this was absolutely not true. Said that your wife apparently had said that you, she didn't want this woman to play the role, and you said that's ridiculous. Which brings me to the question, does your wife have any input, any influence onto helping you choose and decide what you're gonna do? None whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> really? No. Okay. She has a career of her own, and... Uh, and, and an and, amazing and, career. And I don't tell her what to do, and she doesn't tell me what to do. Okay. She and, wrote E.T., right? Uh, yes. And then the other, the latest wonderful one that they uh, did with... Um, Indian in the Cupboard. Indian in the Cupboard, uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you meet? M me? Your wife. Yeah, me. Uh, uh. <laughs> I mean, uh, on a... Met her on the street. She was mine for the price of a drink. <laughs> I mean, did you meet her on a set? Were you working together? Or? We met in, uh, in Francis Coppola's office. Uh, um, ah. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, w I had known her for, for a number of years, and, and uh, um, then we met again. Um, later many years later and um, in his office and began a relationship yeah i want to read you this quote about um sabrina because in it he, you play a role of a man who pretends he's in love mm -hmm. and 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 i won't tell you the rest because it's really a good film it's, it's worth seeing unless of course you saw the first one then you already know so it's perform much <laughs> it's it's much different it's it's quite a bit different okay yeah yeah i didn't see the first one so well you wouldn't know them would you yeah no <laughs> it's true so, but do I want to know is the question. Well, you might. Do you? You yeah. think I should go see it? I think it might, uh, it might be interesting for you. <laughs> I have to ask you this question. Sure. Because when I saw it, how did you get that scar? <laughs> did you fall when you were a child on a bicycle? a fight with a talk show host. <laughs> I guess she looked pretty good at the end of the fight, eh? If you got that bad. Never fight with a woman talk show host, they say. I didn't say it was a woman. Ah. Oh. But, 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 but I but digress. Your, your, but I digress. The quote. And you do too. And yes. <laughs> I'm known to occasionally. Um, in the man that you play in the film pretends he's in love. This is a quote you may have made. In the performance of love, he becomes engaged by the feelings and open to them, and therefore he changes. Yeah, yeah. And I could see that because I, they say about people who are actors like yourself when they're in films, mm -hmm. that sometimes when they have a leading lady and, and mm -hmm. because they're supposed to be in love in the film, they actually fall in love and they end up having affairs. And, and I know that happened to you in the past, frequently. <laughs> what? Well. <laughs> oh, well, I read that about, I read that frequently about you. Did you? Yeah. That um, you deny that? You're not. Look, I, I didn't come here, you know, uh, to, to to have my character assassinated. Well, um, I didn't. I didn't think that you would take that as an assassination. I thought you might take that as a tribute to all the women who've thrown themselves at your feet. That you, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's just. It's just acting. It's acting. I'm like I'm acting like I'm upset with you. I'm not upset with you. <laughs> I, I'm just kidding. You're not upset with me? You sure? <laughs> Put that chair. <laughs> I think you form uh, very close relationships with the people that you work with. 
male and female. Uh, all of the people that you work with, you're, you're in a very intense uh, situation. It's like being uh, in a foxhole together. If you can't count on the support from that person to watch your back and help you out and you help them out, then you're, you know, you're out there alone. So you really do have, have uh, important relationships with the people that you work with. Do you know the game that you play where they say, um, if I say a word, you give me the first thing that comes to your mind? Like, for example, if I said uh, orange, you'd say? Uh, uh, juice. Okay. Just, just the first thing that comes to your mind when I say these, okay? Fu no, no, no. The fugitive. Um, uh, you, you, I, uh, <laughs> this is tough. Well, I was just wondered because you said you formed these close associations. You've done such incredible films. You must have come through those experiences, I would think, with such with fond, the, wonderful memories that come so quickly to mind when I... reduced to one word. <laughs> no. Well, uh, <laughs> I just thought that might inspire you or... Okay, or, let's... Okay. let's, let's, you let's to, that was okay. a, that's you didn't a like gimme. that one? Go ahead, let's do another. Okay, let's do another okay. one. Star Wars. You think this is easy? I got a really easy is, one for you. Yeah. I got a simple one for you, okay? <laughs> We're going to go to commercial on this one, okay? Yeah. Your favorite talk show host and interview of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be, eh? Gotta be. We'll be back with Mr. Harrison Ford right after this commercial. <laughs> A very short clip from a wonderful film called Sabrina that uh, is going to be opening in theaters very, very soon. Um, we were talking about the fact that you didn't do carpentry as a child, but you were very good at it now. And literally, you went to the library, got a couple of books, and learned, self-taught? Well, first I got a job. <laughs> and then I got as, the books. <laughs> oh, as a carpenter's assistant. <laughs> no, as a carpenter, as a contractor. What happened was I had a friend. I, I bought a house uh, when I was under contract to Columbia or to Universal, actually. And I started taking down all the things uh, that I didn't like, uh, figuring that I would pay somebody to remodel it. Right. When I got everything down that I didn't like, there was nothing left. There was literally just the bare, yeah, bare walls. I was living in this with my, my uh, eldest son, my youngest, uh, young child at the time. <coughs> and then I had a, went and bought a bunch of tools to, 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 to work on the on the house and then I didn't have enough money to buy materials so what I did is I took the tools and I went out and got a job a friend of mine had been working as a recording engineer for Sergio Mendez and he mentioned that he knew somebody to build Sergio's new recording studio in his backyard so I went over to talk to him and he forgot to ask me if I had ever done it before <laughs> I didn't lie to him at all he just forgot to ask omission, right. omission. Right. So I, I went out and got a bunch of books and hired a couple of real carpenters, and I was up on the roof with a book from the Encino Public Library. No. It turned out very well, though, and I was uh, never uh, out of work again as a carpenter. Isn't that amazing? What a good story. Now, now that it's a great part of your life and a great love, I've read stories about how the place is... It, your house, it was described, everything fits together as in a carpenter's mind. Everything has a little hinge and is perfectly tooled and... Well, I hope so. I mean, I, I, <laughs> craftsmanship is something that interests me. What are you working on now in your, in your carpenter shop? What are you building? What's your big project? Uh, I'm not working on anything at all. In fact, I'm having uh, my shop and office rebuilt by others. Uh, I don't have the time anymore. And I don't really have the tool skills anymore that, uh, that I once had. Uh, and it would take me a while to get them back. Oh, I didn't realize you'd let it laps for the time being because your career is... I've been busy. You ha I, I <laughs> oh, oh. I know you've been busy, but it also said that one of the reasons you liked the film business was that you were intensely busy. Yes. And then you could go back to Wyoming and uh -huh. walk over the first bridge and uh -huh. see the osprey and remember where the moose was. That's all true. That I have. Yeah. yeah but I so don't, then I, don't I thought really you sashayed in to build a table in your spare moments. Yeah. Well, I, I still do little projects, but I don't really still, I don't, I, I don't get into it, uh, you know, in, for a long period of time. I don't, I don't start projects that are going to take a long time to complete anymore. How far ahead are you booked in your film projects? I mean, you're starting this one with... I'm starting a, a film in January. Right. I've got another film that's in development. I'm not booked... Uh, 
uh, I'm not obliged to it. It's a question of whether or not the script <laughs> turns out well. And then I, right. that's another comedy, which I hope to be able to do after uh, the one I'm doing with this uh, young, unnamed Brad. act. Brad, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what's his face? What's his face? Right, what's and his then face? Uh, uh, after that, I'm, 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 I'm open. I'm open. You don't want to direct? No. Hardest job there is? Yeah. Would you write? Oh, I can't write. No. No? I, I'm, a, I'm a cryptophobe, actually. I can't. A I've, cryptophobe? I've got piles of letters on my desk that I'm meant to return for months. I get really twisted up about having to commit an idea to paper. It's, it's crazy. It's, I don't know where it comes from, but I, I, I am a cryptophobe. Isn't that an interesting? I want to flip back to um, something. It's, a lot of people don't know, at least I didn't know, um, a lot about your background. I hear people walking down the hall outside of my dressing room and they say things, well, because they knew you were coming and I oh, listen to what good. people want to know about you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hear some of those too, you know. They don't know I'm in there. They talked about the fact that, uh, gee, is he married? Where does he come from? He's such a down-to-earth guy. This is a man who, through Sabrina, is bringing, did you know this? You were bringing... Um, elegance in men's clothing back into style. And they say you are a man who is a bit of a clothes horse, that you love clothes. No, I'm careful about clothes. Uh, when careful? I, when I'm uh, uh, trying to create a character, I think clothes go a long way uh, towards the description of a character. And that if you can get uh, information across visually, right. then you don't have to take up part of your valuable story time with that. I think people get uh, information visually very very easily these days. Well, then it's obviously working. Linus Larrabee is bringing men's elegant dressing back in style. Elegant and yet somehow stuffy. <laughs> <laughs> A little pretentious, perhaps? If, if Linus weren't stuffy and rigid to start with, and you had an idea of that, then there wouldn't be as much pleasure in his redemption at the hands of uh, Sabrina. So that's why I, I draw the character that way at the beginning, in order to have some place to go. I, I wanted to play that little game with you. Instead of playing the game with you, let me ask you, if you don't watch your own films, rather than talking about those, whose films do you watch? Do you make a point of watching the latest and the greatest on a... No, I'm... I'm, I'm uh, bad that way. I don't, uh, I don't really go to movies very often. Um, well, you can't go much any place anymore. You're so, quote, well, famous. No, no, that's not it. I just... I just uh, it's, it's like... <sighs> being a chef and then going home and whipping up a little something for your family. I mean... Let I, me away from this for a while. You know, I love the business. It's been very good to me. I enjoy watching other people's work. I really, uh, uh, you know, I'm entertained and moved. I think they're wonderful people working out there. But somehow I just don't get out of the house uh, to do it. Because when you watch it, you're too much into the film itself and the making and the dialogue and you're too Probably. analytical to really Probably, enjoy it. Yeah. We're just about run out of time because you have to uh, leave us and head off There's to... There's no time for my song. Yes, <laughs> I'm just going to mention that. <laughs> just enough time. Ladies and gentlemen, Harrison Ford. <laughs> and of course, I will accompany. <laughs> Not only am I a pilot, but I sing. Did I tell you that? <laughs> no, you didn't. Please, no. take it away, Harrison. Go on. <laughs> You're blushing a little. I hope so. <laughs> it's been um, a, a real pleasure to meet you. Thank you. I enjoyed uh, it. Continued success. Thanks. You were the man who said through attrition, um, a busload of people went to L.A. And, and I was there two years and a half left. And finally, I was the only one left by attrition. I became famous. It was Hume Cronin who also said that. Did he really? He said, if you live long enough, you'll win everything. You know, you, <laughs> just, if you could just outlive them all. Well, no. Maybe but you've not only outlived them all, you've done extremely well, been very successful, very and kind. it has Thank been you. a pleasure to meet you. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Harrison Ford.